the carnivore or keto diet, you would probably be wanting a good gravy recipe that's not going to throw you out of ketosis. Well, this one is so customizable. Obviously it's dark because I made one for my beef roast. And in this video, we start off by preparing the roast and while it's baking and roasting, we make the gravy. Then I show you how to make this concentrated gravy cube that you can thicken your stock and your meat drippings with. And lastly, we're gonna show you how to use it in cooking, in preparing your gravy. And of course, the consistency. Do you like it thick or you like it a little bit runny? Do note that this recipe contains eggs and dairy. So if you're allergic to either one, you might need to substitute. Or let me know if you want a dairy-free gravy and I will whip you one up. The nutritional information and your shopping list is listed in the description box and let's get into this recipe now. For my roast today, I'm going to be using a corn silver side and it is 1.2 kilos or about two and a half pounds. It's all nicely defrosted, so I'm gonna set that aside and I'm gonna prepare a simple marinade to flavor my beef. I'm gonna add one third cup of avocado oil to a bowl tablespoon of crushed garlic, two tablespoons of Montreal seasoning, two tablespoons of dried mixed herbs, and one and a half teaspoons of salt. Just mix that all together now. Simple. Okay, for my pan, I have got a pan with a rack so that while my beef is roasting, I get all the meat drippings at the bottom. This might be common knowledge to some, but if you don't know, you can seal your roast by pan frying it on all sides. I'm just gonna go ahead and cover my roast in this, and I'm gonna do a slow roast. So it's gonna go for a few hours. That's why I'm cutting out the step to pan fry my roast. I've kept a little bit of my marinade because halfway through I am going to rebaste it and just make sure that every inch of my roast is flavored. And now we're putting it in the oven. Now for the star of the show. <laughs> Now let's make the keto gravy. You wanna set your burners to a low heat and first we're going to cook up egg whites. I'm going to be using carton egg whites because it's so much easier than, you know, separating all those eggs. So get yourself a carton of egg whites, way easier. Adding a tablespoon of butter to the pan. And I'm gonna let this melt over the gentle heat. And when your butter has melted, just quite simply, add the whole carton of egg whites to your pan. And then you wanna let that slow cook. Leave it alone. You don't have to stir it or look after it in any way until I show you when. <laughs> and after about 20 minutes, your eggs should have a white base and still need flipping. So do that, mix it up, flip it up. It doesn't matter if you have browning on the underneath because this is a gravy. So I'm just gonna put it back on the heat and let it go for about five minutes. And when your eggs are ready, turn off the heat and let your eggs cool because this is gonna go into a blender and most blenders, some blenders are not heat friendly. Add your cooled egg whites to a blender. Or if you don't have a blender that's going to do a good job, you can do this by hand using a spatula. Just mix and mix and mix until everything is combined. And from 500 egg whites, you will get 263 grams of cooked egg whites. And they do smell a little bit eggy, like egg whites, but not <laughs> overpowering. <laughs> Two tablespoons or 30 grams of heavy cream, tablespoon of gelatin, and lastly, a half cup 
of stock. Now I just use cubes so mine will be a little bit salty but you can use the one in the carton as well or your own. You will take note that I haven't added any seasoning to my gravy and that's because I want to give you the option of when you're making your gravy to add your seasoning separate. Okay so we blend now. And you blend until you can't see any white flecks of egg white left. So you can see that's exactly what I achieved. And this is how thick of a consistency you can expect. It's kind of like a savory jelly if you wish. And do note that while it's warm, it still smells a little bit of egg white. And that's because I haven't added any seasoning or refrigerated it. Once you do those two things, the eggy smell will completely dissipate. All right, so how to store it. I have got a little mini muffin or cupcake pan here, and this is gravy that I previously made. But I just wanna show you, you simply fill your cupcake molds and cover it and freeze it until you're ready to use. Okay, my beef roast is ready and I'm just gonna set it aside to rest. And, okay. This is the amount of meat drippings and seasoning I have. I'm just going to remove the rack, adding a portion of my concentrated gravy. And I'm just gonna pour a little bit of my stock. Now you will need to judge how thick you want it. Obviously, if it gets too thin, you're gonna add more of your concentrated gravy mix, or if it's too thick, add a little bit more stock. And you can use cream if you wanna lighten things up as well. I'm just going to mix this to combine, and you're welcome to also do this over a low to medium heat. As you can see, it's starting to thicken up my liquid. Now, of course, if you want it a little thicker than this, drop another block of your concentrated gravy in and then just work it in. Look at this, it's getting thick. I'm not done yet uh, combining. I want all the lumps to disappear and then we're gonna strain this to get rid of any further seasoning lumps there. And as I said before, we strain it. And this is what it looks like when it's ready. And if you think this is too dark, I'll just show you what it looks like when you add a tablespoon of cream. Lightens up and a little more. And for me, that's perfect for a beef gravy. I accidentally created this recipe while I was making an egg white pudding. Not the viral egg pudding, but just using egg whites. And I thought, but why can't we try and make the savory and see what happens? And that's how this recipe was born. I hope you get to try it and let me know what you think. Carnivore gravy. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and be well.